Thanks to one line of code from a Gil Raviv blog, it is so easy to make it super safe when you're consolidating multiple files. If one of those files has different headings to the other files, it'll bring them in. I'll show you how straightforward it is. Let's go. This is the scenario I want to consolidate these three files, A, B, and C, here they are, A, B, and C, okay? File A is the first in the folder, and if I consolidate these files, then this will work fine. These three measurement columns will be brought in, but any subsequent new columns, measurement four, five, measurement six here, they don't get brought in. I'll show you that happening in a second. And it's really one little tweak to your code to make it super safe so that all columns always get brought in. Okay, let's take a look. So I'll just start off with the standard get data from file from folder. This is the way to consolidate multiple files. And this is the folder I'm in, desktop, the different columns demo. This, this is the folder with the one I just showed you here. Okay, this is this folder here. Weirdly, Power Query doesn't actually show the files in there at this stage. You go open, it's connecting to that folder, and there we go, we can see it's connecting and putting in file A, B, and C. And I go combine and transform. Okay, it gives me a chance to have a look at the data tidied up. It's sheet one from every file, and there's sheet one. But notice this bit, first file. That's file A in the folder. And these are the three columns of file A. Click OK. And brilliantly, it's all done. It is now consolidated. File A, file B, file C. I only had five or six rows of data in each file. But the issue is this, look. All we've got is three columns. Measurement one, two, three. There are no, I can't scroll right, there are no extra columns. Even though file B and C have got different columns. So the, the trouble really um, is the, the sample file is fine. The sample file just goes, go to the first file, okay, navigate to the sheet, and then push the headers up. And there's no change type step, so that's all good. You know, there's no issue there. So that's what it's doing. The problem is with this one. If I, I, if I go here and I go to the renamed column step, okay, well, I'll go to the removed other column step. Here's the three files. And if I click in to here, we have measurement one, two, three. And if I click into file B, we have measurement one, four, and five. And in here, we have measurement one, two, and six. But the problem issue is this expand, which is this clicking on this little icon, basically. Okay, when you do click on this icon, it gives you the option to tick what you want to tick. But what happens in this expanded step is it only expands the columns from the first file. In fact, it just expands the columns from the sample file which is the first file in your folder. And this is the problem step. Okay, this is the problem. However, a simple tweak to the code, thanks to an article by Gil Raviv, I'll put a link to Gil's post in the description below, shows you how easy it is to solve this. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up and um, click on this one. I'm just going to rename it to make it easier for my formulas. I'll call it um, pre-expand. And this is the little trick from Gill's post, okay? First step, so you right click and you say drill down. And it says it's about to wipe out the subsequent steps. Okay, not a problem, just go continue. And what we have is now a list Okay, of tables, measurement one, two, three, measurement one, four, five, and so on. Okay, now I wanna get the list of um, column names from here. And this is where you have to write a little bit of code. Okay,
Okay, and I am going to read this because I can't remember it. So, you wrap this, okay, you wrap this in a list dot transform. Make sure you open the bracket. Okay, list dot transform. You refer to that and then you say each table dot column name open the bracket, underscore to represent sort of each record, and close the bracket. And obviously I've typed something in wrong, don't you love, there we go, the double table. I knew I was gonna get caught by that. Okay, enter. So now we have a list. There's the headings from the first table, there's the headings from the second table, and so on. And then the even cleverer bit is to get the unique items, you can do a list.union, list.union. Now I know that's a lot, okay, but that's it. That is the trick, that one formula that you just write down somewhere and save for the future and come back to it, because I won't remember what that is in a, you know, a week's time. Press enter, there's my list of names, okay? So these are my headings. Then I'm going to add and press FX and call and refer to the pre-expand step just to bring this back. So pre, there we go, pre-expand, enter. I'll just call this ready to expand. And then I'll click the expand button. Now I could wrap all this in one simple step, but I like breaking it out into different elements. I won't use the original column name and I'll click okay. But, so, you know, oh, but it's got all these columns in. Well, that's the thing, that's the thing we replace. We've got the list we need, the headings. So you just highlight everything in these curly brackets and you replace them with the heading step. Enter. Beautiful. There we go, it's now working. That one little formula, okay? That list.union, list.transform, each table column name, all right? I know it's too much to remember, but just write it down, keep it somewhere, save this file, you know. That's it. Brilliant. Then I could just, you know, click on these two columns, right click, unpivot other columns, and I've got my measurement and I've got my value and I can load it. If you do need to format these columns, then you will need either to reference them, which isn't great, or there are a few techniques to you know, reference, change all of them to text or all of them to number, um, probably a video for another time. So I hope you find that useful. That's the really easy way. I know it's not easy to know what that formula is, but hopefully, you know, one line of code, you can just keep that somewhere, use it when you need it. So thanks to Gil Raviv. Always good blog posts and stuff from Gil. Um, you should definitely get his book, um, Get and Transform Data. And again, I'll put links to that in the blog below. So if you enjoy this, if you found it useful, let me know, tell people about this, share this channel with people, and I will catch you later.